All right. Hi, everyone. It's three o'clock Ghana time, so we're going to start. Um, our next, our third panelist will be joining us shortly, so let's let's give him a little time. And we we are starting now because I know some of you are already here. You've been here for a while, but we we told everyone we're starting at exactly three o'clock. So I apologize. We could not start before time. Um, but we're ready to start now. And um, so first of all, my name is Juliet. I am the head of marketing and PR at Mikasa.com. I don't know if you're already familiar with what we do, but Mikasa is, a, is an online real estate company. And what we do is we market properties for real estate uh, developers, agents, people in the real estate space. So essentially, if you're looking for a property to buy, be it land, um, already built property, residential, whatever kind of uh, real estate you're interested in, you can come to mikasa.com and we have a lot of listings available that you can browse through to uh, find what you're looking for. All right, but that's not why you're here. You want to hear from the the speakers, so I will go straight into introducing the people that will be speaking on this panel today. Um, okay, so first person is Pius Peterson. Pius is, um, he's the project manager of King City and Apollonia City. I'm sure many of you are already familiar with Apollonia City and some of you have heard of King City. I currently, Pius and Emmanuel are on mute, so you'll not be able to hear them, but I will unmute them shortly so that you can hear them and then listen to what they have to say directly. I'm just going to go over who they are and what they do for now. So Pius is the project manager of King City and Apollonia City, and um, he is going to be part of this panel on the step-by-step -step process of land investment in Ghana. So he'll be helping you break down exactly what you need to know about the process of land investment in Ghana. And um, in addition to Pius, we have Emmanuel Matekoli. Emmanuel is a lawyer with about 10 years experience in the legal field in real estate. He's uh, the managing partner of his own law firm. It's called MNO Law Consult. And you can, we've written quite extensively about the experiences of both Pius and um, Emmanuel on all our social media, on our blog. You can find their LinkedIn profile there. So you can reach out to them directly after this webinar if you have questions or um, follow ups that you need to, to, to do. Our other panelist is still, it's not yet here, but don't worry, he'll be joining shortly. We're having a little technical difficulty there, but he'll be joining us shortly. Okay, uh, but before we begin, I just want to briefly tell you about um, what uh, the purpose of this seminar is. So we're going to have this webinar just to educate you. But in addition to that, we'd also like to tell you about our online housing fair, which is a digital event where people who want to buy property can come directly to our website Again, check all our social media pages, or you can just go to mikasa.com slash reserve to book a spot to um, find out what discounts and packages are being given. For instance, Pius's company, Apollonia City, is giving about 10% discount, actually a 10% discount on all their lands. So if you're here, you're looking for land to buy in Ghana, you have to know that Apollonia City, King City, they're offering 10% discount. Chris is joining us right now. Okay, this is really good. So Apollonia City is offering 10% discount on all lands and more than 10, uh, more than 30% discount on their townhouse properties. Chris is here. Okay. All right. Yes, yes. So our third panelist is here. Um, we've already spoken briefly about Pius, we've spoken briefly about Emmanuel. Chris is the managing director of CDC Properties, and um, he'll also be joining on, on this conversation, talking to you about the processes of um, investing in land in Ghana. 
So like I said, a lot of his information, his bio, everything is on our website already. It's on our blog. It's on our social media. So you can reach out to them after this. But I just want to go straight into the webinar so that we don't waste too much time. We have all our panelists here, so we can just go straight into it. When we started this webinar, what we did is we asked you, the attendees, we've seen that a lot of you, so many people are here already, almost 100 people are already here. We asked you if you had any particular questions. Hold on one second. If you had any particular questions, any particular things that you wanted addressed, and many of you had concerns about certain terms in real estate that you do not really understand. So we're going to begin by explaining and distinguishing between certain real estate terms so that we lay the groundwork for you to understand exactly what we are talking about as we proceed. So I'll begin with Emmanuel. I'm going to unmute you right now so that we can hear you. Hi, Emmanuel. Okay, one second. Um, okay. Manuel, can you unmute yourself? I'm trying to unmute you. All right, okay, this is good. Hi, Manuel, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you clearly. How are you doing? I'm doing very well. Thank you so much for being here. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> We're going to begin, um, like I said, people sent in some particular terms that they didn't really understand or real estate things that they would like to understand from both the legal standpoint and then also from the investment and real estate standpoint. So beginning with you, Manuel, we want you to um, explain what exactly people mean when they talk about registered lands and titled lands. We'll keep it brief so that everybody can talk, but if you can just and distinguish what's what is registered land when we are talking about real estate or land and we go to somebody says oh you have to register your land what does that mean and what how is that different from titled land all right thanks for the question it's, it's a question that keeps coming up um first of all um if if i'm being too technical just let me know okay sometimes i you know you might think these things are easy, but they may not be that easy. Um, so, so, so when um, we say registered land, historically, when they say land, a land is registered, it means that the land has been recorded in the deeds registry. So, so, so we had a deeds registry before the Land Title Registration Act was passed. So when they say a land has been registered, it means that it has been recorded at the deeds registry but you did not have title, you see. It was only 1986, after 1986, when the Land Title Registration Act was passed, that titles were issued to those who had actually registered their lands. So now we don't have, we don't have anything called registered land. If you don't have a title, it, when you have a title, then you have registered your land. But if your land has been recorded, then what we call it is plotting. It means that your land has been plotted at the Lands Commission. It has been registered. If, you're, if you've been issued with the title certificate, then you have registered your, your land. But if you have not been issued a title certificate, which is a land title certificate, then what you have done is you have, your land has been plotted at the Lands Commission. It has not been registered. The, 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 the distinction is this. Be, before 1986, we were operating under a system called the Deeds Registry, which is under the Land Registry Act, 1962, a 1962 law. And under, under that law, they only recorded the transactions between two persons. So Juliet entered into, into an agreement with Emmanuel Matikoli on this particular date. That is it. So that's the deeds registry. And that is what people refer to as a registration, which was valid from 1962 to 1986. But after 1986, if you say that that constitutes registration is false, that is plotting. Um, it is the land title certificate that is registration okay all right okay so what we are saying is but 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 this is not general it only applies to the registration district so the registration districts are Accra, Tema, Kumase and Awutu Senya but where you go outside Accra, Tema, Kumase and Awutu Senya to the non-registration districts then the plotting is registration do you, do you get me okay because those people still work under the deeds registry which is under, land, under the Land Registry Act 1962, the old law. 
the old law still applies to them. But the, but the districts where the new law applies to, um, they are not, um, they, 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 are, they, they, they get titled. Okay, all right. Um, so I've seen people are sending in some questions. Please, we'll be addressing your questions at, uh, when we're getting to the latter part of the webinar. So don't worry, at all. we'll be looking at your questions. We'll try to answer as many as we can. Um, but back to what you were saying, Emmanuel. So we are, you're saying that there are two kind of districts. There's the non-registration districts. Yeah. The non districts. yeah. Right. So another, another, another 1986 law, which uh, allows, which, which made it a requirement to get a land title certificate, mm -hmm. the minister is mandated to declare districts, registration districts. In fact, it has, it has, it is, it is a, I mean, it, it has delayed. But so far, only a few districts have been re declared registration districts. And these are Accra, Tema, Kumase, and uh, Awutu Senya. Okay. So these, these districts, when you register your interest, you get a land title certificate. Okay. Okay. But the whole of Ghana, apart from these districts that I've mentioned, you get a, you just have your deed. There, there'll, be a, there'll be something recorded behind your deed. It is called plotting. They, they write plotted on. Mm -hmm. Okay. By this person, yes, that is the plotting. So that is not even registration, but we call it registration. It right. Is, it is plotting. But even even behind the deed, they've written plotted. Plotted. They've written plotted, 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 plotted number, plotted on. You know that kind of information is behind the, the deed. Okay. All right. So for now, we're just explaining the terms. Um. So we we're looking at we've looked at registered and titled land just so that you have an understanding of what these terms mean we'll look at other terms and then we'll go into exactly how they interact with you or how these terms come up when you are trying to acquire land or buy property in ghana um another thing that people were very interested in was a distinction between not a distinction per se, but they wanted to understand exactly what constituted two lands and who's entitled to them, and then government lands and who's entitled to them, or who can buy from these people. Can just anybody buy from schools and, and the government, or what, what, does, what do these terms mean when we are looking at a real estate in the legal context? Okay, so that's, a, that's another good question. Um, so two lands uh, have been defined in the constitution. Mm -hmm. Then and and the two lands are defined in other legislation as well. However, I choose to use the constitution because the highest law of the land. So to the extent that the other legislation is inconsistent to the constitution, it's not involved. Mm -hmm. Those two lands are rights or interests in land which are controlled by a, a, a stool on behalf of the subjects of the stool or control. Hello. Hello, Emmanuel. I think it's um it is frozen or so. Hi, Chris. Yes. Okay, so it looks like Emmanuel has cut out, so maybe you can take it from there. If you can help us understand exactly what happened. Uh, oh, Emmanuel is back. Sorry, I, I went off. I don't know what happened. Yes, can you can you hear me now? I hope it's clear. I hope it's clear. It's so clear. I mean, for me, yes. I, I think that in the, in the new legislation, which is the the land act, some of these things must be made clear. You know, these cutting of companies and all these things. We have to let us know what these things are. Okay. Yes. Um, so can you go over that again, just because you cut out to make sure that people who did, who missed part of, um, I'm defining, I'm defining stool land as it is in the constitution, 1992 constitution exactly. and stool land has been defined as an interest or right over land mm -hmm. or in land controlled by a stool for the subjects of the stool. Okay or controlled by the head of a particular community mm -hmm. for the subjects of that community or controlled by 
a, the, the captain of a company for the subjects of the company. Okay. That is the definition of constitution. Okay. However, however, in the in another law, the, the administration of lands act, for instance, two lands, the definition is similar to what is in the constitution, but they add clan, clans. And to me, to the extent that a clan has not been mentioned in the constitution, it means that it, it, it is no longer applicable. Okay. But the of lands act is the something law. And even to the extent that is subservient. It is lower than the constitution. It is. It is not applicable, in my opinion. You. But you get me. I do get that. Um. So does that mean that only the subjects of the stool can buy from that? Uh, can buy land from the stool? No. 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 So. 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 Um. That, it doesn't mean that. It doesn't mean that. When they say uh, public land, I just want to use some. I just want to give this as an example. When they say public land, so government, and because I'm asking your second question by 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 answering this question. Yeah. So government compulsory acquire, acquires land. Government does not own land. Mm. They have they have the right eminent domain. So they compulsory compulsory acquiring school lands, school lands, individual lands, mm. and they have it has income government land. Now government can be acquire land for the public purpose. So when government acquired, acquires these lands, these lands become public lands. Government is holding it in trust for the people of Ghana. You, you get me? I get that, yeah. In the same vein, the stool lands are also being held in trust for the people of the stool. So when you are buying stool land, that is why you have to deal with a group of people. You are dealing with the chief with the consent and concurrence of the principal elders of the, of the stool. So these principal elders are the representatives, those representing the people. If you are buying family land, you are dealing with the head of family, with the consent and concurrence of the principal elders of the family. These are representing all the factions in the, in the family. You see, because they are the ultimate beneficiaries of the stool. And that is why when you, if you, if for instance, a stool has a, a, a freehold, a freehold interest in land, the subject of the stool can have a usufructory interest. Okay. Out of that, carve, carve that out of the freehold. Okay, you're introducing some terms that we want you to explain us, uh, like freehold, usufruct, leasehold. Uh, these are terms that, again, we want to make sure people understand because they are terms that we hear thrown around quite often. We hear that, oh, so-and-so has a freehold interest in land. So-and-so has a leasehold. What do these terms mean? So a freehold interest is an indefinite, it's, a, it, it, it's, it's holding land for an indefinite period of time, for infinity, okay. indefinite. So and a freehold interest, it's, it's forever. Holding it in perpetuity, yes. Okay. And then a usufruct, usufructory interest is because you are a subject of the stool, mm. you, could, you could gain or get an interest in land if, or acquire an interest in land if, for instance, you reduce a portion of the land to your possession. So, for instance, you, you start cultivating or you start exercising possessory rights over that portion of land. By virtue of you being a subject of that stool, you can also acquire an interest okay. for, for, a, for, for, a, for an indefinite period of time. You know, the, the reason why I don't want to use indefinite period of time is that, you see, this interest is subject to the freeholder's interest. So if, for instance, I, I reduce the free, I reduce the, 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 the stool's um, a land into a usufactory one, I create a factory interest from the stool land, it means that I'm so subject to the stool. So I must be atoning tenancy to the stool. You get me? I do. If the, if the stool requires me to, and I'm, 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 I'm using this example in the customary sense, because this is customary law. So if the stool requires me to uh, um, contribute or, 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 or give them um, some props at the end of every year, I'm supposed to give it to them. If I don't, I, they can, can 
they can I can remove from the, the property. Okay. Because it amounts to denial of title. Okay. Yes. Uh, all right. Okay. So thank you very much for that. Um, going continuing with the different terms and what they mean and how they apply to you as a person who's interested in investing in land. Chris, maybe you can also explain that we always hear about plots, acres. Somebody wants to buy this number of plots of land. This person wants to buy this many acres of land. That's, um, I think we, we hear the words, but I don't know that we actually understand what it means in terms of size or in terms of um, well, just size, what's, what's a plot or it, an acre is. We, we see the numbers, we hear the numbers, but I don't think we really have an understanding of what these things mean. So if you can please explain those terms and then we'll proceed. Okay, so um, good afternoon to all your people and uh, it's good to have my big bosses here, the legal brain and the, uh, Mr. Pius. So when when... When we say a plot size, for now, um, some, something that has been used for a long time, so it becomes a normal you know, size, which is 100 by 70. So it's 100 feet by 70 feet. But let's go back to what the real size of a plot means, you know, in the surveyor's terms. Um, you get 100 feet by length, and then 100 feet um, with breadth. So it's length by breadth give you 100 times 100. You're going to get 10,000 square feet if you multiply 100 by 100, isn't it? Okay. <laughs> so that is supposed to be the original size of plot. Mm. Now, four of those um, 100,000 100, uh, feet, that's uh, four times 100,000 is 40,000 feet, isn't it? Okay. That is supposed to be the size of an acre. Okay. So... So if you're going to buy an acre in an, in an, in an old, it was supposed to be um, 200 by 200. It's giving you 40,000 square feet, isn't it? Okay. okay. But now we are told to leave 30 feet road in between every two plots or, or so, okay? So it become, it's becoming a norm now. So you are going to see 100 by 70. I'm sorry, is it a requirement by the state that if you are building, you have to... <laughs> it's, 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 not, it's not like my lawyer will go come there. I mean, I don't know if, if he has any law that makes it legal. Mm -hmm. But in terms of um, the um, building permits and, and all the building zoning uh, requirements, it said that you should leave at least 30 feet road in between plots. Mm -hmm. for, for you know, road and for access and all that. Mm -hmm. So it, it, people, I mean, landowners now realize that if you're going to leave 30 feet of our, our 100 by 100 all the time, then let's as, as well make it 100 by 70 per plot. So that when you buy one plot, there's a, a 30 feet road either beside it or in the, in the, in the middle of it. Mm -hmm. all right? So now, originally, you're going to be 100 by 100, but now um, it's 100 by 70. Okay. So in, in a surveyor's um, term, when he's giving you a full 1.0 acre, it means you're getting 40,000 square feet, you're getting 200 by 200. But now, if I say I'm selling you a full plot, or a full acre, sorry, I'm going to get 0 0.64 of an acre. You don't get a full acre. Because they've shortened the 70 feet, I mean the 30 feet out of the 100, and then run across across board. So it's a bit technical, you know, if, if you ask me. Mm -hmm. But now a one plot is 100 by 70, 100 feet, 70 feet. And you're supposed to get at least 80 feet road close to the land. Okay, okay. Are we okay? Yeah. yeah so that's, that's, that's it. That's, that's the, the size in the um, acre dimensions for um uh, plots plots by dimensions okay. if i mean in Kumasi, i was being told a few weeks ago that they don't do 100 by 70 i think they do 90 by, which is the same as um you know we're going to get uh, seven thousand square feet anyway mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. okay okay but, um, but you know it, it's, it's every jurisdiction has its own way of um implications 
Okay. Uh, please, the questions coming in, I see you. We will be addressing your questions soon. Um, and I understand that more people want to join, but we are quite a lot. So with time, we're going to keep doing these. So for those that are not able to join, this is going to be recorded. We'll post it online later. For those that are not able to join, we will be having another webinar soon. So please don't worry. We'll have more information for you as we go on. Um, so Chris, aside, we've looked at plots and acres because we want to create context. What, what's, what, what do people mean when they say farmlands? Is it just lands allocated for farming? Is that what the word says, farmlands? What's, what exactly do we mean by farmlands? Okay, so um, it's exactly as it says that, um, you know, and I think Moya can come in here because he was educating me some time ago that there are even laws that protect farmers, you know, because some were being kicked off their farms some years ago and the government had to come in and try to protect them. So farmlands are meant to be lands that are only meant for agricultural or I would say, you know, farming purposes. A farm can be grain cattle or whatever, but it's a farm. So um, most farm most farmlands are found in outskirts of town. So or you know, township where there's not much of development. So if the development catches up to the farmland, then you have to now go and rezone the farmland into either residential or commercial use. Okay. Okay. And finally, I wanted uh, I want us to look at a term that we hear often, or well, those of us who work in real estate, we keep hearing there's such a thing as service land and unserviced land. What's, what's the difference between these two? Why would I buy service land as opposed to buying land that is not serviced? What, what does this mean and why would I go either way? Okay, so um, let me make it just simple. Um, if you're buying a service, I really, really fully, they use the word full because some are half or semi serviced. Mm. So, if you're buying a, a fully serviced land like you have in Apollonia, um, those in Mr. Piles will talk more about it. They've done, they've done the roads, they've tied the road, we say, they've tied the roads, they've put in electricity, they've put in water, there's drainage, there's, you know, all the other amenities that you, you can get around the land already, you know, put on the land or you know, for you before you even start building. Yeah. So you're buying plus the amenities, they're buying plus the services they are going to have around you. But some go, you know, uh, further because mostly in uh, estates, you know, concepts, you now have a land that has been walled and then they have, they have a gate in front of it and then security. So they add that kind of security to the service. So someone call you and say, I want a service. And I ask you, is the service land in a real estate or uh, in a real estate uh, entry, or is just, you know, um, lands that have been put across, you know, and all that. If you don't add the wall, I think uh, I, I can, I will not use fully service because people are also buying for security. They want to be in, you know, a zone where it's a community on its own, like how Apollonia, you know, uh, prides itself. So, you are you are in a jurisdiction of you know uh, the, whoever you're buying from, and then he had, he's added water, lights, you know drainage, tide roads, and all that to it. But any of the other land that don't have all this, um, some of us you know do semi-service plots because if you if you add the services, the price of the land goes a bit you know up. So if you do the roads and you you know, maybe bring light or there's water, even though it's not fully serviced, you can say semi-serviced or, you know, sometimes you just say service land, but you explain probably what the services are, you know, that you're bringing on board. Okay, all right. So speaking of service lands and Apollonia City, um, maybe you can explain to us exactly what the Apollonia City or uh, King City service lands entail? What, what exactly does it mean if Apollonia is selling service lands? Because Chris has explained what the semi and how, semi service lands are, and also given an, a general idea of service lands. But since you have specific, that kind of specific land that you are selling at Apollonia City, you can maybe elaborate a little on exactly what service land at Apollonia City entitles you to. But before you begin, I just wanted to mention again that at our housing fair that is happening, it's starting on Monday for the next two weeks, from Monday to 15th um, June to 28th June, you can get 
10% discount off your land if you're buying from Apollonia City. It's exclusive to Mikasa. It's exclusive to our house and fair. So everything he's going to talk to you about with regards to the land that they are selling, you can get it off 10% uh, off when you buy it during the upcoming housing fair. So Pius, maybe you can explain what service land at Apollonia City looks like. Yes, thank you very much, Juliet, and my cherished listeners. Um, Apollonia City, as um, has been rightly said, and King City are sister projects. King City is uh, located in Takradi. Um, we have uh, gotten our approvals, done uh, uh, delineations, and everything you know, yet to you know, roll out infrastructure. Apollonia City is far advanced. Now that is what we know of in Accra. You now located uh, you know, cl close to OEB. Now what we refer to as service plot in Apollonia is a bit more than what uh, Chris shared. Um, why? Because the infrastructure we have in Apollonia is world class. And the idea behind it is that this is a project now, which is being financed by a multinational in the name of Rendeva, now, which has projects across seven non-major cities in Africa. And that is Ghana, Nigeria, Kenya, DRC, and Zambia. So we don't joke with the quality of infrastructure now as required site. For example, our power is underground. We have underground no, power reticulation. And uh, we have uh, 18 kilometer you know, dedicated power lines you know, connected to mobile bulk power supply to ensure that um, you know, there's you no know, reliable power. We again have plans um, in place to install you know, solar farms you know, so that in case you don't have reliable supply from the national grid, you know, we rely on that. And um, again, we are connected to water and uh, uh, much more importantly, storm drains. Because if we can flush our memory, our memory just yesterday, the day before yesterday, and our center account got flooded. We have made no provisions for storm drains as well. And then uh, um, internet is also you know, uh, uh, available on site. And the key thing about Apollonia's infrastructure is that um it is tailored to suit uh, foreigners who want to even you know, come and acquire property and stay in mm. now am i saying this we have you no know, walkways and landscaping and these uh, you know, features appeal much more to you know, foreigners so all these uh, add up you know, to our infrastructure that we have in place at Apollonia. okay all right thank you very much Pius. um so speaking of foreigners, right, we want, or people who are not necessarily Ghanaian, we want to look at some of the things that you want to look at, some of the factors you want to consider when you want to buy land in Ghana. Uh, let's take people who want to buy land to live in it, first of all. Let's address those people. So for example, you're a person who lives in Ghana, and you want to buy land and then build and live in it. And then let's take a scenario where you're a person who does not live in Ghana, but you want to buy land and possibly hold, or even if you want to build, what, what do you need to do if you want to purchase land for these purposes? What are the first things to consider? Thank you very much. In, uh, now, before I tackle your question, now let me try and distinguish you know, between um, a local buying land and a foreigner, or the main distinction. No, uh, because you know, most of the factors you now applies to both local and foreigners. Mm -hmm. um, for a local, you know, location is key. And one of the things that you are supposed to look for and the location, availability of infrastructure, as I said in my intro, and then um, you no know, proximity to amenities. One will consider uh, amenities like good schools, hospitals, and then uh, no, proximity to, to workplace. But in the era of uh, a new normal uh, created by courtesy of COVID-19, um, when you know, most of us are working from home, um, as to you know, whether it is still uh, a factor to consider, 
when buying a property that it should be close to your workplace because uh, if you're not lucky, a lot of people will be required to you know, work from whom you know, only God knows. What I'm trying to say is that if you are acquiring a property to stay in, as a local, you, you know, consider the proximity to your work and the um, availability of, um, of infrastructure um, used to which you want to put the property. If it's for residential, you, know, you will insist that you have strict development control you know, so that the use to which you want to put the property will give you highest and best use. And again, you look out for estate management services because that will enhance um, um, the use of your property for residential. Um, Asakumono hitherto was you know, supposed to be a very nice you know, community where if you are in a residential enclave, you stay in a residential enclave, but now you see shops and containers being uh, no, developed in front of shops and uh, in front of houses. Uh, in Apollonia, we, we frown against that and say, no, one cannot do that. So if you are buying a property to, to, to stay in, you no know, location is key, especially. Uh, most people you know, tend to prefer to live in the CBD, in the Central Business District. Street. But of what important it is when you have a house uh, you know, which cannot you know, uh, produce the basic function of a house, providing you a shelter, it rains and your family and everybody who has to come out. Mm -hmm. So it is very important to also, and the location, you know, uh, consider what which are uh, in the pathway of growth, you know, within urban sprawl or you know, simply say, uh, you know, trajectory. I mean, growth trajectory. You see where there is growth. And again, um, another factor that one has to consider is the tenure of land that he or she is acquiring, that the security of tenure. Now, does your buyer has a good title. Um, 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 uh, will you be able to you know, acquire a mortgage if you want to? And this ties in in my you know, follow up point that is the budget. No, you need to you know, consider your budget. And the budget ties in uh, to the design or, or the scope. Like if you are a beginner, no, maybe you need a single bed expandable. If you have family, all these things will tie into it. And the time is also key, the time lag of construction. Uh, you know, more often than not, you know, most of our, or most of us, and more especially our you know, parents, spend you know, most of their time you know, to build their houses only to go on retirement and die in them. So you need to be very mindful of the time, of the time so that you have the benefit to enjoy your property. And again, the lifestyle that one um, has, you know, uh, that the location that one chooses should also suit that lifestyle. Your neighborhood and existing amenities should suit one's lifestyle, you see. And, uh, more importantly, there should be you know, security, as we have in Apollonia, 24-7 you know, security to ensure that you know, there is no armed robbery and the likes. More importantly, uh, though you are acquiring the entity to, 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 to stay in, you should also be mindful of the, of the, of the ability to resell it or to rent it, you see. So it is very important to get a place where it will be easier or a place which is appealing to sell than to, I'm not saying that it's not advisable to build in your hometown, but if you build in a village near your hometown, it's difficult for you to sell it unless you let you know, somebody uh, not there. So these are you know, the, the, the basic you know, factors I think one has to consider, especially when you are buying a home to stay in. As a foreigner, the only thing that will change is that I presuppose that as a foreigner, you have a residence permit already. Um, but, you know, what will change is the lease term. You see, the lease term for a foreigner is you know, 50 years. Mm -hmm. But if you are a foreigner, you are you know, married to Ghanaian, you can uh, also enjoy the full term of a maximum of 99 years. But I believe we give 80 years for residential and then uh, 70 for uh, um, industrial. Okay. All right. Okay. Um, I'll continue with you, but on the topic of foreigners, I just wanted to ask Emmanuel, 
um, just because this is an aspect that also has a legal connection, what exactly the law says, he, he um, has briefly mentioned the lease term. But aside from that, if you're a foreigner that wants to buy land in Ghana, are there different steps that you have to take? Um, clearly, he just stated that you have a different um, lease period or a time through which you can own the land, which is 50 years as opposed to 90 years, I believe he said. Um, so as a foreigner, what does the law say about owning land? If they want to purchase land, what, how is the process different from if you're a Ghanaian? After this, I'll come back to you, Pius. Okay, okay, thank you. Um, so the law recognizes two categories of owners. So there's a natural person and the juristic person. The natural person is an individual, and then we have the company. So let's start with the individual. So for the individual, um, the, the law says that uh, number one, a foreigner cannot have more than 50 years, a 50 year interest in land. That's number one. Number two, um, a foreigner cannot hold a freehold in land after, 19, after 1962, a foreigner can hold, not hold a freehold interest in land. So assuming a foreigner had a freehold interest before 1962, that freehold interest will commence 62 plus 50 years. You can only have 50 years. Does it make sense to you? It does, yes. Good. So, 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 um, if you, if you, and then finally, if you create a fraud interest in land for a foreigner, that interest is void. Okay. So now let's move on over to the company. So there's a, and I like to use the cases to illustrate some of these things because the law is in the cases. So okay. there's a case called the Blue Sky case where a company, a uh, Blue Sky, um, had was reported to register as freehold interest in land and they went to court because they said that the land commission was discriminating against them because um they were refusing to give to register their freehold interest and they said that even if, if they should register the freehold if they should register the interest so they register only 50 years now the courts um agreed with the land question the the the, the, the blue sky's argument was that they had incorporated their company in ghana and therefore, they are, by virtue of that, they are Ghanaian citizens. Mm -hmm. And therefore, they, they, they should be entitled to whatever Ghanaian companies are entitled to. But the company pierced the corporate bill. So, uh, um, the corporate bill is where, you, if you incorporate a limited liability company, it's, it means that you cannot, you cannot leave the bill and, and, and look behind the company and see who the shareholders are. The, the, the limited liability company blocks the shareholders from the company. Mm -hmm. But the company look behind the view and saw that shareholders and the directors, etc., and therefore it held that the company is not a Ghanaian company. And also, our Ghan, our GIPC Act, um, the definition in the definition of a citizen in the GIPC Act, it says that a, a, a citizen is a company that is 100% owned by Ghanaians. So, I mean, given this. Uh, the, the, the Blue Sky case and the GIPC Act, it means that if you want to benefit from um, what citizens as a company, what, what citizens are entitled to in Ghana, then your company must be 100% owned by Ghanaians. Okay. Does that make sense? I think this is very important yeah. for people who are not, who are not okay. Ghanaian but have businesses in Ghana. You want them to know that your company must be owned by Ghanaians, what percentage again? Hundred percent. It was hundred percent owned by Ghanaians. In order yes. for you to be able to qualify as a, a, a person who is Ghanaian to own land. Exactly. To own land, if so, if you want to own land for more than fifty years, mm -hmm. then you must either be a citizen of Ghana, or your company must hundred percent owned by Ghanaians. Okay. All right. Um, I've noticed that Yao Sam, Helen, and Helen List, you've raised your hands to ask questions. I will allow you to talk shortly, but I just want Pius to continue on um, if you want to buy land for investments, particularly, specifically, what you need to do. I want us to look at that, and then I will allow Yao Sam, Masters, and okay, Helen is gone, but Yao Sam, you'll be able to talk. 
um, shortly. So, Pius, if you can take us through, for people who want to buy land for invest, investment purposes, sorry, for instance, they want to buy, build, and sell, um, or they want to buy, hold the land, and then sell. If someone wants to hold, what is a, an ideal amount of time to hold? What does that even mean? If somebody wants to buy land, hold it, and then sell, and then somebody who wants to buy and then build before selling for investment purposes, what can we say about this? Okay, thank you, Juliet. I must say that uh, even our land administration and our regulation frowns uh, on holding land for speculative purposes. Mm. Now, that is the more reason why if you are selling a land, now that is if you are um, uh, and giving an, an assignment, you are required to uh, develop the land to some level. Mm -hmm. And you must also be mindful of the development timelines of the land that you are buying. Because in Apollonia, we, uh, we have a timeline that uh, uh, no one has to um, um, build. You see, and, and most of these are also in agreement. So if you are buying land for speculative purpose, you should be mindful of, of these things. Now, um, real estate offers uh, opportunity to invest in diverse ways. You now you can buy a land, build on that land, and then what? Sell it or buy a land, build on it, and hold it. If you are holding it, it could be owner acquire. You know, when you are living in it, or you know, apartment, where you are able to receive uh, passive incomes, you know, from rental uh, incomes that come in. Now, the choice of one over the other depends on explicit uh, strategic plans. You see, that uh, considers the overall goals or objectives of of the one investing in relation to opportunities in the market. For example, if you are one who you know, wants to you know, quickly um, flip, like you know, uh, no, you buy land in a prime area, build on it and sell, then you have to be mindful of the location, the choice of location. It should be a location you know, uh, uh, which is appealing you know, so that once you conclude or once you finish your um, burden, you get uh, somebody to buy. If you also want to receive a, a passive income from you know, rental values, you also have to be mindful of the area. Um, is, it, is the area uh, close back to um, areas where you have a work, uh, no, I mean working class? No, um, is it going to be difficult for you to get people to rent it? What Apollonia provides is that uh, we, we are mixed use, mixed income, in the sense that you now the project on completion will create a live, work, and, and play environment where one will not be required to commute for a longer distance, I know, before you know, yes to it or a wedding. So if you want to buy a land, uh, and develop on the land and rent it, I think Apollonia is an ideal place for you because very soon our industrial park, which is already housing um, Puma, Total, Alucinco, and uh, no, my, uh, no uh, I think other companies which uh, uh, um, uh, no come land. You see, all they have moved in and they've uh, no, started their operations. So no, very soon, on completion, uh, it will be a city on its own, now, which will be waiting for Accra. So that is the idea. You know, often than not, uh, it's unfortunate that we are a group among real estate companies. But um, Apollonia City intends to just create a platform for developers, now, be it, uh, now, let's say, now, Regimental, uh, Death Traco, all those people. They come on board. You no, know, once they are uh, not putting the infrastructure, you no, know, they can all uh, you know, come on board and invest. You see, in our smed and muse. So, you no, know, depending on on how you want to flip, if you are you know, willing to lock in you know, capital and receive you know, passive income for a long time, then I will advise you that 
buy a land, no, develop it, and then no, keep it for rental. But if you don't have time and you no, quickly no, want to no, uh, uh, turn around and release the capital locked up in your investment, then I would advise that you will buy a land, you will build it and sell. But in buying the land, be mindful of the location and key factors such as infrastructure, amenities, and all those things, which will help you to uh, sell the land early. Okay. I don't know if I've answered your question. You have, you have, quite extensively. Thank you very much. And, uh, and again, 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 before I forget, mm -hmm. uh, no, return on uh, lands in Apollonia or property in general, um, year on year, as uh, I've been appreciating you know, between 20 to 25 percent. Mm -hmm. Yes, if, if you buy land or invest in a house. Okay. Thank so, you. you know. That's very important information for people who are listening right now. That um, returns on land that is purchased at Apollonia, for instance, can yield 20 to 25 percent um, returns, right? And like we are saying, there's a 10% discount that starts next week, Monday, 2 to 28, from 15 to 28 um, June. So if you are ready now to purchase land from Apollonia, this will be a great time because you already know that's a great investment opportunity. I've seen some questions, follow-up questions for um, Emmanuel. Some people are asking, if, what if... Um, you are a Ghanaian with a foreign passport. Are you still a Ghanaian? Just very simply, uh, very short answers for people like this. Uh, someone is asking uh, that they are a Ghanaian with a Canadian passport, for instance. Can they still buy land and enjoy the um, longer period of ownership? And another person said um, that they are worried about the losing interest after 50 years is there nothing that can be done about that so i just want us to make that clear what the lost position is on that then i'll move to chris um we yeah we have to move on so just these two questions again sorry uh yao sam masters and arthur i will let you speak after emmanuel is done i'll let you ask your questions sorry emmanuel let me unmute you one second okay you can speak now so I'll answer the same question first. Mm. Okay. So if you are a foreigner and your lease has been, you are entitled to a 50-year lease, you, can, you are also entitled to include in that uh, agreement a right to renew that lease. Mm. Now, in our law, the Conveyancing Act makes provision for implied covenants. So implied covenants are covenants that you don't have to expressly state in the agreement. However, right to renew is not an implied covenant. So you, have, you must expressly state in your agreement that um, after the expiration of the lease, you want to you want activate the right to renew before you can have that, that uh, right. So okay. that's, that's, the, that's the response to the okay. second one. Before you continue, what if you're a dual citizen who wants to... Yes, moving, moving to the first question. That's the first question. Yes. Now the first one is, a dual citizen, you are, you are a citizen of Ghana. So um, now, this is how I understand the question. It's possible that he's, he, he's a citizen, but he doesn't have a Ghanaian passport. Hey, I mean, he's, he's a Ghanaian because of his, his heritage, but he doesn't have a Ghanaian passport. Mm -hmm. So he should, he should get a Ghanaian passport. You should apply for a Ghanaian passport yes. and get one. Then you can acquire a, a, a land in Ghana, as a citizen of Ghana, and they're entitled to, um, you know, long-term leases. Mm -hmm. Now, if he's a dual citizen with two passports, he still can acquire land in Ghana, like any other citizen of Ghana. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Okay. Thank you very much. So, for those of you who were asking about citizenship, those who, if one of your parents is Ghanaian, for instance, or you have a Ghanaian passport. Even if you don't and you have dual citizenship, you can apply for a Ghanaian passport. Okay, so I'm going to allow Yao Sam, first of all, to speak. Um, so, so, Yao, you can ask us your question. Okay, I'm trying to unmute Yao Sam so that we can hear him speak. 
Hello, Yao, can you hear me? Hello? Okay, if he's not available, I'll move to Arthur. Um, Arthur Bettinus. Hello, Arthur. Hello, Arthur. Okay. All right, I'll just move on. Can you hear me? Right, okay. Arthur is here. We can hear you. Hi, Arthur. How are you? Hi, thank you. Thank you very much. Um, um, uh, I have already have um, uh, uh, answer to my questions, but um, what I wanted is the presenters to left their information so I can contact, contact them because I'm a foreigner. I've been to Ghana a few times. I'm a planning to invest in the land. So, but I want their information so I can follow up on that. That's very fine. I'll be sharing um, after this. We'll send out another email and you can also check our social media pages. We'll have the information for all the uh, panelists, the speakers that are here so you can contact them directly. So yes. after this, okay. yes, you can follow our social media pages, but also I'll be sending out an email with information about this so that you can speak directly to them. Okay, thank you very much. You're very welcome, Arthur. Um, Yao, are you ready with your question now? Hello, Yao, I can see that you are unmuted. Are you ready to speak now? Okay, all right. Yao still seems not ready, so I will move on to Chris. We've talked quite a bit about Apollonia City, right? And we've talked about King City. Well, a little, we touched on that, but we've mostly spoken about Apollonia City. And I want to know from Chris, what other two emerging areas could you, would you say people can buy land in or invest in land in these areas? Places that might not necessarily be big already, but places that uh, people who want to dip into investments can look at and say, oh, these places are coming up, so I can start my investments there. Okay, so um, this is going to be a bit, you know, uh, it's always a challenge when people ask me that question because uh, like my mother said, it's only about location, location, location. But if you look at the trend of how you know people are buying, you get pe you get to understand that okay, more people are moving towards this area, and is there's a saying that look at what people are, are are moving towards, buy their land before they even get there. So it tells you that you look at the trend of um, development. So before I even answer your question, you know there are a lot of trunk routes in Ghana. There's N1, there's N2, there's N3, there's N4, there's N5 out all the way to, you know, N something. If you're able to buy, if you look at what development that the, uh, the, the, the government or the state is pushing to a particular, you know, um, road or a particular area, then you should know that this is where, you know, I, I'm sure Apollonia, for example, saw Takrade being the next big town. So they will go there and buy land in Takarade. But if you ask me for the next five emerging areas in Greater Accra region, I can tell you. So yes. you look at the trend of how people are buying, and you can say, okay, fine. Uh, East Legon is already built, is already developed. Um, Trasaco, you know, uh, you have, uh, um, you know, uh, cantonment, all those, you know, areas that we, we know already. But then can you afford them? If you cannot, you're an investor. Where do you put your money, you know, next five, 10 years? Are you going to get, like my brother said, if you're 25% every year, that next four years, you're getting 100% of the value of the land you bought. And that's a huge investment that you can't get anywhere, you know, in most parts of the country. So I, I gave you a uh, top five, you know, places last time. You didn't, didn't uh, publish it. I'm going to, I'm going to just, <laughs> I'm going to just, uh, you know, we we'll just uh, get back to it. My, my number one place I put, uh, I put on my radar is Oyarifa. Mm. So um, Oyarifa, why? Because um, the road is hard road all the way from uh, Ebri, passing through Oyarifa to to, uh, to uh, Medina, Atenta, and then already you are in Accra when you get to the, the mall, Accra mall. So it's a, almost a straight stretch. There's no too much of 
seven ten. The only problem you get is traffic in at Medina. I'm sure if the government is serious about you know getting more investment in that area and they work on the traffic lights and you know, get people to you know at least stick to the traffic relations, we will not have too much traffic in Medina. Number two, I'll do East Legon Hills. Why is Legon Hills? Because those who live in East Legon are giving their, their, their homes to um, people to change to other restaurants or you know, shops or offices and all that. So where do they need to go again? They need to go a bit further away from East Legon. They can't go too far away. So most of them are investing in East Legon Hills. And East Legon Hills is, you know, fast, you know, developing. The only reason why I'll, I'll make it number two is the road. So you're going to pass through Adringano to um, Ashali, which is Junction Major before you get to Slagon Hills. And sometimes the twist and turn. But the road is done. It's, it's tired road now all the way to uh, School Junction. So then it, it's, it's also another place to look at. Then number three is um, Amra here, all the way to Apollonia. So um, the that's the road was stretch. The, from Adenta, you're getting to Frafraha, Amra here. Um, uh, Apollonia, OEB, Dodoa. Those are places that are actually I mean, So the, the closer you are to town, the higher your price or the higher you pay for, for, for the land. Number three is um, coming 25 Pram, Pram Doña Stretch. Down the Tema uh, motorway is almost completed. I think the first, uh, first phase is done. So traffic is a free flow now. So anything on that stretch, just when you pass Tema, you're getting to 25, 20, I mean, boom, so boom, to 25 to from Pram to Dawenya, then now Tripoli. There's affordable housing at Saglemi, don't get that. So the government has put affordable housing there for a reason. It's just this, you know, whole, whole level, you know, of, you know, when they're going to um, fully make it operational. The number five is Pukwase Masamine Road. So the road is still under construction. Uh, but that's one of the busiest roads you can get, straight to Kumasi, Kumasi Road. So people who love to be on that road are those who always are on the road to Kumasi, or they, they don't want to go too far away from Accra, but then it's a, it's a few minutes to Chimota, and you're already in Accra. Okay. So those are my first five. My last one will be Kaswa. I don't know why people argue I want to say Kaswa, but <laughs> Kaswa is big. It's a big thing now, in, whether you like it or not. It's in central region. Uh, we are still having an argument for jurisdiction because part of Kaswa falls in Accra and part falls in central region. And then you have those jurisdictional issues. Uh, you can ha you hassle the lawyer for that and ask him if there's any law that has been passed for that yet. But these are my five uh, emergencies in a sit one being Kaswa. Yeah. Okay, all right, okay. Um, thank you very much, Chris. I want to allow a few people to ask questions again. A lot of people have also submitted their questions via text. There are a lot of them, about 30. We'll try and answer as many as we can. Um, but for now, Ian Stapleton, I'm going to allow you to, I see that you've raised your hand. So if you're ready, you can answer, uh, you can ask your question, Ian Stapleton. Okay, can you, can you hear me okay? Yes, hi, Ian, I can hear you. Yeah, um, thanks a lot for put, put, putting on a great session. Um, really enjoyed it. I'm just jotting down loads of notes here. Um, so I've, um, I'm married into the Ghana uh, family and my wife and um, spend a lot of time in Ghana the last three or four years. Um, and uh, recently looked at some land and going through the process of buying it, but the, the land's in my name. So I wanted to ask about the, the lease. What you said about the lease um, is like 50 years if it's for a non, for a, a foreigner, if you like. But being married to my wife, who she hasn't got her Ghana passport yet, but she will as soon as this whole um, COVID lockdown thing, um, you know, gets passed. Is it, do I, um, am I eligible for the 99 years or the, the become married into it? Um, I think, Emmanuel, you will answer that question because um, a non ghanaian married to a Ghanaian and they want to know what kind of interest, what duration of interest they will enjoy before um, they, she gets her part. Okay, so let me give you a number of scenarios. Okay. One, assuming the property joint 
which is together. It means that they hold it as tenants in common. So if the, uh, um, the seller conveys 99 years to both of them, then it means that the wife, who is the Ghanaian, would have 99 years and he would have 50 years. Okay. If it is conveyed to um, the foreigner alone, then he would have only 50 years. Okay. And it's conveyed to the wife only 99 years. Now, let me just talk, give you a little um, tip. In my experience, currently, everybody is giving 50 years. And it started with the Lands Commission. The Lands Commission consistently has been giving 50 years. It is not law, but it looks like it is practice. It's becoming practice. And every time the Lands Commission starts, the land is also, also, also taken up. So now you see that the stools also are giving 50 years. Families rarely give 99 years nowadays. It's been outside a crowd. An individual saying. So, so it looks like even for Ghanaians now, it looks like even we are not able to get more than 50. But like I said, always negotiate a renewal clause in the lease agreement, into the lease agreement. Okay. Thank you. I think Juliet is muted. Juliet, you are muted, so we, we can hear you. Oh, <laughs> okay. Can you hear me now? Yes, we can. Okay, all right. Um, and as I say, Afo, you can go ahead and ask your question. Yeah, thank you very much, Juliet. Um, thank you. I um, mean, you have a very wonderful panelist, and my, my mate is Mate Kole. And uh, hi, Mate. You are doing very well. I'm very, very excited to hear thank you. Yes, thank you. Thank I'm you. I'm actually calling from London at this moment. Okay. Yes, so uh, my question basically is to Def Traco. Um, I realized that. Um, <clears throat> yes, um, uh, as a, I negotiated a number of agreements for clients who have purchased from, sorry, from Apollonia, sorry. Yes. Sorry, sorry. <laughs> I mean, all these are real estate companies. And I realized that uh, in most cases, you see they, they come with uh, um, specifically the, their templates, come with their documents, and it becomes very difficult to negotiate their terms. And they have some cutthroat expressions that uh, you don't expect lawyers to accept line and sinker. And I'm currently negotiating some agreements with some clients at um, Apollonia, Dev Trago, and it's been very different. I, I should say that Apollonia um, is relatively better when, when I compare them to some other real estate companies, which is good. But let me find out specifically, what are the processes for obtaining a valid document when buying from Apollonia? And um, do you ask, assist specifically in the registration processes? In the you know, you, you have the mother document and you have already dealt with the lands commission and all that. So, what specific assistance do you give to your clients in the registration processes? All right, thank you very much and have a great day. Thank you very much, Ernest. Okay. Yeah, thank you very much. Yeah, Juliet, can I come in? Yes, please. you can. Yes, yes. Yes, 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 thank you very much. Um, no, to quickly um, address the issue of, say, you see, you know, most of the uh, terms or the covenant in our agreement is in the interest of our clients because we want to ensure that our clients you know, always have you no know, value for me. You see, such that you know, the use to which they are buying the property is what they are getting. You see, so. Well, I think I will you know, take it offline with him and try to you know, find out you know, you know, what exactly. But again, if you acquire land from Apollonia City, what you know, uh, is required or, or the steps involved is that you first get an offer letter, uh, you sign an SPA, a lease is given out, you know, fully executed by both parties, 
and we assist in the registration. We have a good well, land title certificate, and also um, we have a relationship with the local authority, that is the KKME. Our master plan is already approved, so you, know, you don't have a problem uh, with approvals of your development. We try to uh, you know, create a platform uh, you know, to help our clients in all these areas. So like he rightly said, we do this uh, you know, for our clients. And again, you know, let me quickly you know, chip in this. Um, you see, Apollonia City, as the name stands, is a name uh, which was carved from Apollonia. So more often than not, you know, people try to uh, you know, make the distinction. It is, it is a project you know, which was named after the community, but we have Apollonia lands who are joining the project. It's not Apollonia City. So uh, uh, if there are issues with landism and all those things in, in Apollonia, it doesn't apply to Apollonia City. And again, if one wants to buy land, I would advise my cherished audience at the time is now. Because now, now that it is raining, and now that is when you'll be able to see the topography, uh, the characteristics of the area, and uh, what is good to flood and all those things. And in the era of COVID-19, to uh, no, we spend more time home. So it's about time that uh, we all try to invest more in the places that we want to call home and spend more time there. So that is the advice that I would advise my, uh, uh, my audience. Yeah, thank you, Juliet. All right, okay. Thank you very much, Fires. Um, so just so everybody knows, for those of you whose questions we are not able to address, send your questions to info at mikasa.com. Just in case we are not able to touch on everybody's question, you can email us directly. Or if you want to be put in contact with any of the panelists, if you miss any of the information on our social media pages, just search at Mikasa on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, everywhere, or check our blog or our website for information about the panelists. If you are unable to get that, you can also email us directly at info at mikasa.com and we will try and put you in touch with the panelists or answer the questions that we are able to. I want to answer one of the Q and A's that I want to ask one of the Q and A's that was submitted, and then we'll continue with the people who raised their hands. Aaron Albenyo is asking, "How does one deal with land guards when acquiring a property?" And I've seen that there's quite a number of questions pertaining to land guards here. So, if Chris, maybe you can um, look answer this question for us. I understand that land guards are an issue that people encounter a lot and are very, very uh, apprehensive about. So if you can um, help us out by explaining exactly what we can do in a situation where land guards come up. It's very simple. Um, I think uh, the government knowing this, and I think in course time, they um, opened a unit at uh, CID headquarters called anti-land guard unit. It's been held by one of my, my you know, close friends uh, um, at Look, and they are diligent in their work. You see, um, if you make a, a petition to the land guard unit through the, um, to the CID headquarters, through the land guard unit, they will take your, your case, do investigation on the land, and if you are really the owner of the land, they will make sure they clear off all the anti land guards I mean, and the land guard on your, your land. Um, but Land guards is not an issue. I mean, I don't want us to go mainly into it. It's just people who try to scare people off their lands, okay? And sometimes the same owners who sell the lands to some other people want to find a very smart way to, you know, kick you off the land and then get someone else in. But if you know you bought the land genuinely with the help of a lawyer or from a developer, it's a developer job to make sure you have an, an, uh, a very clean, uh, problem-free, land-free uh, land. Because he's, he's giving you, you've paid money, you're supposed to get a land that hasn't that much issues. So sometimes, if you buy from a stool and you have issues with land, it may be that another stool is contesting it. If you buy from a family, it may be that another family 
who have their own sort of youthful people are also trying to, you know, but it doesn't mean that are going around on lands and, you know, slashing people with calluses and no, no, no. Land guards issue is about people contesting ownership. And if you are, if you have gotten a lawyer to go through a proper, you know, uh, uh, process to acquire the land, you shouldn't have any land guard issues. If you do have, the government has, uh, or the police, the National Police Headquarters have a unit called the anti land guard unit. And it was set up. I've seen them in action, so I can I can attest, you know, to the uh, to the diligence. They go deep, deep, deep. And if you, even you, the one, if you were the one who petitioned and your case is wrong, they will stick it out to you and better fight for the person who, you know, you're petitioning against. Okay. All right. Thank you very much, Chris. We only have 15 minutes more to go, so we're going to keep the rest of the questions really fast. Um, I will allow the next few people to ask their questions. So let's keep it really brief. And for those asking, this uh, session is being recorded. We'll share it online so that you can watch it later if you were unable to begin with us. And please also be aware that we're going to have another webinar next week. It will be announced on the same platforms that you found out about this one. So you can join again next week so that we have another conversation. Jennifer Broby, I understand, yes, that you want to ask a question. Jennifer, um, I'm unmuting you. Okay, Jennifer, you can speak. Hello, thank you everyone for presenting today. The question is, um, I'm considered a foreign too and what I work on and being a citizenship. But um, my question would be the pros and cons of Jennifer, please, I'm sorry, can you please speak up a little? It looks like your mic is a little away from you, so we can't really hear you. Okay, can you hear me now? This is so much better. Thank you, Jennifer. Okay, so I would like to know the pros and cons of buying from a developer versus buying from, I guess, an individual or the stool or just any other person. Okay. I think Pius uh, from Apollonia City would be the most ideal person to answer this question. So really quick, because we have less than uh, 20 minutes now. Thank you. I'll be, snap. I'll be very snap on this. Yes, if you buy from a developer, especially, um, uh, but the choice of developer is key, but it should be one who has a you know, muscle to, 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 to ward off langarism and then who has a good title, who has the financial backing, who, who, who has a track record, who has not delivered elsewhere before. So, so it is, it is, I would advise that, especially uh, know, regarding due diligence and the likes, uh, if you can buy through a developer, you are better off than the chiefs because uh, or the school. I don't want to uh, know, delve much into that because today is this and tomorrow is that. But a developer has a reputation, especially being a multinational, no, no, for example, you have a reputation, um, a mistake. Let me, let me just be a bit, uh, let me just be, you know, funny on that. Uh, I don't want to be, to be high, I mean, to be sued by the, the uh, chief tenancy, whatever, ministry of chief tenancy or whatever, by the next day. So um, you just have to go through the process. Yeah. If you're buying from a chief, and that's why I've said this, you just need a legal person. It doesn't matter who you're buying from. If you are buying and taking the, the right process, you can buy from and have issues. And you can buy from a, a store and not have issues. If you, if you go through the land buying process and, and if you, you use a, a, a legal person or a, you know, someone who is vested in that, but it's ideal. Sometimes, like I said, the ish, the, sometimes most of these schools are not educated and you are okay as you are doing your actual contemporary. They don't, they will not, they don't understand what, what, you are, what you are trying to tell them. But if you get to a developer, they have you know, sales units, they have, you know, customer service and all that can take care of your, you know, needs and your work. So it's sometimes more easier, okay, and less stressful if you go to a developer. But it doesn't mean that you buy from a developer, you are 100% you are safe. No. Wait, also from a chief. So yeah. let's come in here. Um, this is my two cents. The only way you can secure your interest in land is if you go to a lawyer in Ghana. And this is from experience. You see, let me tell you, even how you prepare the documents, it's all. The, the law provides that 
a, a non lawyer cannot draft a document, it's a legal document, it's void. That's one. And if a non lawyer and drafts a legal document, it's a criminal offense. If yeah. you're a lawyer and you have a document that you have not drafted, it's a criminal offense. Now, even when even the drafting of the conveyance, how it's supposed to be drafted, even the due diligence that you the law says that you have to go back 30 years to check the, the, the documents. You see that uh, 30 years from the today, the person who acquired land did the proper thing because it's a continuum. And in the words that you're supposed to use in the conveyance, in the conveyancing act, everything is law. So if you bring your documents, whether it's from a developer or whatever, and you haven't gone through the right process, and I see that you have not complied with the law, it can be set aside. It yeah, but you know, most of the developers have lawyers. So that one, that well, one. I, we, yeah, I, I know. The part is that I'm a developer as well. I'm, 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 I'm trying to let them know that if you're buying from a yeah, student, yeah, you are yeah, safe. You can buy from the developer to get paid. Yeah, 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 get a yeah. tough person to always help you through the process. I know they have. A, I don't have a very good lawyer. Too. We, have yes. very good. we have only ten minutes left, so if we can move on to the next person, I think we we get we understand what everybody is saying. Um, further questions will be addressed to you individually, so that you follow up. Um, Jennifer Brobe, Jennifer, if you are ready, would like uh, you can proceed and ask your question. Hey, I'm the one who just asked the question about oh, okay. Okay. okay, all right. Uh, Henrietta Lutroth. Henrietta. Yes, I'm here. Can you hear me? Hi, Henrietta. You can proceed. And Hi, good afternoon. Good evening, everyone. Thank you for this information. Um, Emmanuel, I have a question for you. So you did mention that we need to use um, legal advice. So my question is to you, can you just quickly highlight the steps that we as a buyer need to take. Where is the onus for us in the process? Sure. So first of all, I would advise that you get a lawyer who due diligence on land for you. Now, the reason why I advise, and I'm going to be very quick about this, the reason why I advise that you do diligence is one. The, the, the courts have continuously held that you cannot get, you cannot be a bona fide person for value without notice if you do not do a search application. And this is a Supreme Court judgment. So, it, so one, you must do a search at lands commission. I would advise that you further do a search at the land use and special planning authority to confirm if the land has been zoned for the purpose for which you intend to use it for. Because if um, somebody is selling land you, which has been filed, that, that person does not have capacity to sell that land to you. So that grant is void in the first place. Then I would advise that you do a search at the high court to see if there's any litigation on the land. Because some owners, land owners will sell land to you and not tell you that they are in court. After this has been done, then you enter into an agreement with the, 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 the vendor. The agreement, they are implied an express covenant. Certain covenants that if you do not say them expressly, you may, prop, you may build or invest $1 million in the property and after 50 years, the money is going, the property is going to the land, the land, the land owner because it's an implied covenant that once the lease has expired, you have to give vacant possession to the landowner. If you put in a, a renewal, immediately the lease is about to expire. You activate it and then you are given a renewal. That even how, to, how you execute the documents is as been stated in law. What the land commission, the land title registry is supposed to accept, what they are not supposed to accept, has been set as the land title registration act. For me, I think that it will be easier on all of us if we just do the right thing because. Whenever you go to court, there are many land cases that I see. And there are so many things that could be avoided if they had just consulted a lawyer. And then you see people who have land certificates which are set aside today. To be, and it, it, and it, it's just a big mess. It's a big mess. So I just, I, and I'm not saying particularly me. There are many lawyers out there. But I'd advise that you use the sense of a real estate lawyer. And, and, and I believe that whoever the lawyer is, and defend you in court if anything should arise. Okay. So the key we have and do you is also really recommend this as well for family transfer land? So but if a family do you also recommend this process if you're acquiring land from a family member? Especially because family land <laughs> uh, okay. for, for, for selling land multiple times. Yes, true. Thank you very much. All right, thank you very much, Teresa. Um, we, we're almost out of time, so we'll allow for one more question. But those asking for emails and contact information, please, I will send a follow-up email 
uh, to everyone here because you registered to attend this webinar. So I have your emails. I will send you an email with the email information and contact information for everybody on this panel. So please give me um, a little time and you receive that information. Our last question um, is going to come from Johannes Mills Beal. Johannes, Johans, can you hear, can you hear me? <laughs> Hello. Hello, Joe. Yes, hi. Hello. Yeah, good afternoon. My name is Johannes. Um, uh, this is Johannes Nosby. Yeah, I hear you um, guys talking about like 50 years and 99 years. I'm a Ghanaian and I live in the States. So um, I want to know whether you can own a land outright, like I buy a land. Since I'm a Ghanaian, I live outside um, Ghana. Is there a limit to own land like 50 years or 99 years, or immediately I buy it? That's it. I own. It. Okay, I think this question goes to Emmanuel, right? Yes. So, 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 so uh, answer this one. You can buy a land outright, which is called an assignment. It can have more than a 50-year interest in, in in land if you are a Ghanaian. So that's that thing that answers your question. Yeah. Okay, so Johannes. Um, um, if you do a background check, it mostly is the residue or the, the leftover, you know, number of years left that you, the person who you are buying from will give to you. Mm. So if I have a 99 year lease, I, 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 I did this let's say 10 years ago, I only have 89 left. I can't give you more than 89. Because like you said, if you get a legal person, they'll give you all the you know, pros and cons, and it'd be easy to, to go through this. Okay. I think we have four more minutes. It's very easy to find two lawyers. They, sometimes it can be complicated and make the whole case, you know, basa. but if, if you go through sometimes the uh, developers who are already have, uh, let me speak for myself here. I have lawyers that look at my stuff. Sometimes I even get to go to Emmanuel if I need other, you know, advices. But if you get a developer who already has lawyers on standby, they've done all these background, they don't even know what you're going to ask and put it on the table before you even ask for it. If they get the other lawyer to come in, it will be lawyer against lawyer. When a lawyer comes to buy from me, I, let, I just pitch them to my, my lawyer and that will be easy for me. I don't even deal with that. So it's, it's easier to go through all these things to get these things, uh, you know. Okay. All right. So um, we're going to take, I think we can still take one last question we have enough time um the hands have dropped so i'm just going to pick a question from the q a that was submitted so one person wants to know what are the key risks uh to look out for when buying property so for all of you i want each of you to briefly touch on one major risk that you think people should look out for very briefly so starting with pious if you can just touch on one risk that you think that people should look out for when buying land. Emmanuel, same with you, and then Chris, same with you, and then we can proceed to wrap it up. Yeah, thank you, Juliet. Uh, I would say that um, you need to be sure and definite on the land that you are buying by getting a surveyor to pick the coordinates if you don't have an approved site plan, because more often than not, no, no people no, tend to have a search report which does not no, correspond to the exact land that you are buying. And this is a major risk. So if you are buying a land, rather than relying on a site plan which has been you know, photocopied and, and given to you, try and get a surveyor to go to the exact land that you are buying, pick the coordinates, and generate a site plan. On the other hand, if you buy from a developer like us, we do you know, buy a coded site plan, which exactly reflects the coordinates that you have on the ground. So you don't have an issue. So be, uh, be mindful of the land you are buying, you know, vis a vis the land title, uh, uh, the site plan that you have been given in conducting your search. Okay. Um, 
Well, it, for my experience, um, I've had clients who have asked me to do due diligence for them or to assist them by land. And the landowners are willing to give us title documents. I am. I would say that be well of such landowners because, and you put the law to them. Inside the law, they will. They will still. They are uh, insistent. They are not going to give you any documents. The, there's the law provides that the, there's an implied covenant that the transfer of the lessor must produce all title documents to you. In fact, if they don't do that, you can take them to court, and the court will award costs against them and make orders and everything. But those who is not giving documents for you to conduct due diligence, I would say be well of those people. Because you cannot buy land without doing your due diligence on the document. Because if you buy the land today, whatever mistake they did 50 years ago, you will be bound by it. So that's, that's my two cents. Mine, mine is just simple. Um, apart from getting a legal person and um, getting a Licensed surveyor, you know, not just a park surveyor to then pick your land. Um, I mean, some clients are very, very stubborn. They'll tell you to give them your site plan. I always find clients like that. If you get a surveyor to go and pay the licensee, but the most important part is the due diligence, which entails that you have to do an official search, not just a search, not just the window search, an official search with the land commission. The window search just helps you to know an idea of what will be coming from, but even that one is not something you can, you, can, you can base on in court if there's anything to go wrong. So you need an official set to show you the details of the land. And then, like my brother said, you have the document from the owner to, you know, I take my clients through every process. Even the ones that are taught that doesn't have a land title, that they ask, why, that, why don't your land have land title? I tell them, maybe it falls here, it falls there. Or it's a judgment that we are plotting. The judgment will do this and that. Hey, you need to know. They need to know, and, and that will be easy. Most of the cases in court now are land cases, 90%. If uh, you know, counsel would, 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 would agree, most of them, uh, and even the lawyers that don't even know land law now, are doing land cases. It's, it's where the money is now. But if you do the due diligence, you avoid all the, all the back end. Buy from a developer. <laughs> Buy from a developer. Okay. So, like, I keep saying, we're having a housing fair next week. It's starting uh, Monday, the 15th to the 28th, and uh, developers like Apollonia will be, there, will be there with a lot of discounts. For instance, Apollonia is offering a 10% discount off land. So this is a really good time to buy property if you are in the market for it. In addition to the discounts on land, they also have a 30% discount off townhouse properties. So there's going to be other discounts and like I said earlier, we're going to have another webinar next week, so you can have um, other questions answered there. Yes, and this one's exclusive to Mikasa, so you, you don't want to lose these two weeks. Another question, I want us to answer one more question, and then maybe the uh, speakers, you can give me your closing remarks. But before that, um, I have a question that says that, I'm looking for a very simple question so that we can answer it quickly. So one person is asking, if you build a home on leased land, after the lease up, would the lessor now be subject to own the house that you built? And um, what is the process for renewal? I think, Imano, you mentioned that there should be a renewal clause in the original contract. But what if you have land that... Uh, you, you bought land and the lease was for 50 years, but now you've built on it. What happens to the property that you built on the land? If we can answer that. And then closer... Assuming, I think, as you mean, there's no renewal clause. Yes. Okay. So you can give us a context of no renewal clause and where there's a renewal clause. Yeah. So, so, so this one, I, I said that in, in every lease agreement, there are covenants. So the implied covenants are covenants that you do not have to write in the agreement, but the law. The law places those obligations for the lessor or the lessee. So, for instance, if you, you, you purchase land from a lessor, there's an implied covenant that the lessee, when the term expires, will give vacant possession of the land to the lessor. So, if in my lease agreement, I do not expressly covenant that uh, before the lease expires, I will apply for a renewal, then it means that you, the implied covenant will kick in. 
And if you refuse to go, the lessor will sue you for breach of contract and you will be, you'll pay damages and you'll be kicked off the property. Okay. In the situation where you have expressly put in the agreement that um, um, you, you have covenanted that you renew, what, it mean, what usually happens is that you covenant that six months to the expiry, expiration of the lease, you will apply for a renewal of the lease. If the six months lapses and the thing expires, it means that you have not, kicked, yeah, that you have not activated that renewal clause. You, so you put in the renewal clause and you activate it. And when, once it's activated, it means that you have a first right to apply for renewal. And if and you granted a renewal because you have a house or a building on it. But what I would advise is that even the express, the express provision, you should state the number of years that they are going to give you. So for instance, you can ask for, a, you can get a 50 year lease and ask for, ask for option to renew for another 40 years, making 90. Okay. All right. Okay. Thank you. So just briefly, if everybody can just close, um, if you have any uh, parting message, again, for all those uh, watching, I will share, first of all, this video is being recorded and it will be shared across our social media. I will follow up with an email to everybody with the details of all the panelists. So please do not be worried about that. And if we can quickly wrap up, Pius, starting with you. Thank you, Juliet. Uh, my closing remark will be that if you want to buy land, I suggest that the time is now because it is not getting any cheaper. Out of Ghana's uh, total land size of uh, 238,000 plus square, meter, uh, 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 square kilometers, it is getting finished. It is being reduced every now and then. And real estate Owning real estate or investing in real estate offers investors the opportunity to accumulate wealth. So if you want to create wealth, the safest investment uh, is real estate. And the time is now for right. you want to invest. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Pius. Um, Emmanuel, last remarks before Chris. Okay. Um, yeah, first of all, I want to thank the council for this opportunity um, to educate your people and also i would want to state that emphatically that if you are going to buy land you should go into every transaction as though you are dealing with a dishonest person that's number one number two um i don't see why you would invest so much money in property when you are not sure that you have secured your interest in property the only way you can secure the interest in property is by complying with all the laws because there are about 15 or 16 defenses in land law and if you do not comply with the law, I bet you, if you go to court, you will not win any case. You have to, if you don't comply with all the laws, not some, and leave, you have to comply with all. So once you become the court that you have complied with all the laws, you will have a defense which is an unanswerable and qualified and an absolute defense in law that will come to your aid. But if you do not comply with all the laws, then there's a, there's a possibility that if you don't lose it now, you can lose it 50 years from now, or your children will lose it. Okay. All right. Thank you, Manuel. And finally, Chris, um, any parts and remarks? Okay, bro. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to know the, your um, questions, and I think you need another um, webinar to address yeah, all the questions. You need another webinar. Someone, someone is taking me on on the acre, acre size that I, I mentioned. It's 43,560. It is, it is. I was just using an example that if you're doing 100 by 100, that's 100 times 100, you're going to get 40,000. Sorry, yeah, so you're going to get 100, wait, 100 by 100 is uh, 10,000 um, uh, feet. So whichever it is, let's find out, know your, your if it's 200 by 200, you're going to get 40,000, but that doesn't mean you get exactly 40,000. I'm not a surveyor. But in survey, you know, that's why you need a licensing surveyor to do your work. They have plus and minuses that they do. So that one, please, they don't, don't be too hard on me. I'm not a licensing surveyor yet. Um, all I would say in acquisition of, of, of land is that it's a, it's a business. And it's a serious business. Don't, like the council said, don't, don't take it, you know, as, as a, a easy, you know, um, thing. Go in with all your, your you know, questions. Go in with all your... Um, uh, information on the table. Don't try and say why well, trust this person. We are buying from even a trusted source, and the person is not willing to give you information. It's a red flag already. 
So make sure that all your questions are answered and then avoid all the pitfalls. If, if they go on your website, Mekasa has a lot of uh, blogs and, and information on you know, pitfalls and buying lands, you know, issues of you know, land litigation and all that, how to avoid them. Read, research, an easier way is to go through a legal person or, like you said, buy through a developer. Sometimes, and you know, most of the developers that you, you may have a, a name for are not registered under Grader. Grader is Ghana Real Estate Developers Association. And these, you, you need to be part of those associations so in case they are going wrong, they can be called to order. But any developer that is not part of, you know, uh, any institution that is, is uh, worth, you know, calling them to order, then you have, a, I, have I have so many issues of people who, who tell me, oh, I want to buy a land from maybe ABCD company. Does he, is he a, a, a member of Radar? I said, go on the website and check. If he's not, ask them, why are they not part of Radar if they know they are doing the, the right thing? And I'm not making any adverts for, for Radar. But it is actually, you know, advisable you buy land from developers that have some, you know, because to um, um, uh, their job or their business. And then it can give you um, that, that safety. And if you are buying through a broker, most people buy land through brokers. If you're going to buy through a broker, make sure the broker is registered. Now that you have a land going to parliament, you need to have a broker. You still need a legal person to help you go through the process. And most importantly, do your due diligence. Don't sit in UK somewhere, send money to someone, you've not done a search, you've not done anything, you've not seen land. Sometimes it's really good to get a plane ticket, come to Ghana and come and see the land with your colo colo eyes. Make sure this is the land I want before you pay for it. I okay. wish all of you the best of you know, the day. All right. Okay, thank you very much, Chris. Thank you so much, Pius Patterson from Apollonia and um, from Apollonia City. Thank you, Emmanuel, MNO Law Consul. Thank you, Chris, CBC Properties. We will send the, this recording, we'll share this recording on our social media, and we will send you an email with the details of all the speakers. Don't forget that we have another webinar coming up next week, Wednesday, so you can uh, have the questions that were not answered today. They can be answered then. And uh, thank you all so much for joining us. We really, really appreciate you. Thank you. All right. Goodbye, everyone.